This first case takes us back to 2017. A young man named Pedro Ruiz III had aspirations of making it big on YouTube. If you look back and break down the various eras of YouTube, you can recall that around the mid to late 2010s, there was a large amount of creators making videos around pranks and wild stunts. So the idea that Pedro came up with was to take a bullet point blank and survive. So babe, let's go ahead and uh, show them what we have in store for our first video. Alright. Want to explain? This right here is a 50 caliber Desert Eagle. This thing. Oh, wait. I gotta grab that book too. I knew you were gonna do something. Mm -hmm. At the time, the word challenge was a frequently used keyword in trendy videos, so Pedro thought that this was going to be his key to internet fame. In order to carry out this video, Pedro requested the help of his girlfriend, Mona Lisa Perez, who was pregnant with the couple's second child at the time. Pedro wanted Mona Lisa to be the one to shoot the 50 caliber Desert Eagle, while Pedro would stop the bullet with a thick, hardcover book. Mona Lisa was not as hungry as Pedro for success on YouTube, and wasn't willing to go to such lengths for a chance at views. But after a month of consistent begging, Pedro was able to convince his girlfriend to take part. The couple planned to record the video on June 26, 2017. That same day, Pedro took to Twitter and made a post sharing that he and his girlfriend were going to record one of the most dangerous videos ever. Now, it should be stated that this idea originally started as a question that Pedro had. He wondered if a 50 caliber bullet could penetrate a thick hardcover book. I really just want to see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through a book. I just want to see if a 50 caliber bullet can go through. This idea later evolved into Pedro wanting to hold the book up against his chest. Pedro had made up his mind and was 100% set on getting his girlfriend to participate with his idea, saying, The most trustworthy person that I trust in this world is my girlfriend, Mona Lisa. So if I die, I'm pretty much ready to go to heaven right now. If I die, I'll be ready for Jesus. He probably won't accept me into the pearly gates because of how stupid this is, but I have confidence that my girlfriend will hit the book and not me. Just as the stunt was about to be carried out, Mona Lisa got cold feet as she wielded the weapon. She tried once again to convince Pedro of not going through with this crazy stunt, voicing her concern that it could easily go wrong. She also mentioned that if it did go wrong, she would be viewed as a killer. To this, Pedro said, as long as you hit the book, as long as you hit the book, you'll be fine. Come on, the battery's gonna die on it. Come closer. Ultimately, Mona Lisa agreed to do it and pulled the trigger about a foot away from Pedro. Upon impact, Pedro flung back and hit the ground. According to Mona Lisa, Pedro muttered, stop, babe, stop, babe, when he collapsed. Medical officials were contacted immediately, but as you would imagine, there was no saving Pedro at this point. Pedro Ruiz III lost his life as a result of this extreme stunt. Mona Lisa Perez later went on to plead guilty to second-degree manslaughter on December 15, 2017. Her sentence included half a year in jail and 10 years of supervised probation. She is also never allowed to own a firearm. The court took the video footage of the actual event, which was recorded on two different cameras, and has never released them to the public. However, there is a public transcript of the videos presented as part of court documents. This next person hits close to home for me because I used to watch Greg Plitt all the time when I started to go to the gym in high school. As a once fat kid that wanted to change, Greg's videos played a massive role in just fueling me. And I'm sure there are hundreds of thousands of other people who watch Greg's videos that have also been positively affected. I can still vividly remember seeing a lost but not forgotten tribute image on Instagram of Greg on the day he died and just being shocked by the news. Greg Plitt was a fitness model, actor, and YouTuber that frequently posted motivational videos on the platform as well as instructional training videos. Greg also served in the army for half a decade and spoke about the similarities between training military recruits and the average person at the gym. 
I think for most people now, especially if you're younger, this may be the first time you're hearing of Greg, but to paint a picture, he's sort of like the OG David Goggins in my eyes, and what I mean by that is David Goggins did have a bit of an online presence back in the early to mid 2010s, but only in recent years has he really blown up and became a well-known name. So Greg was kind of a similar person who had this superhero mystique around them that just made them seem larger than life. But on January 17th, 2015, I, as a naive teen, would be reminded that we're all simply humans and can be victims of life-altering or ending events any day of the week. On this day, Greg was filming a new video for his YouTube channel on a train track in Burbank, California. A friend was with him that day, helping out with the recording, but then Greg got the idea that it would be really cool to get a shot of him racing a train. So once Greg heard a train approaching from behind, he took off running, and this is where Greg made a fatal mistake. He thought that the train was on a different track, but in reality, he and the train were in the same lane. When medical officials arrived, Greg was beyond saving. Grant Thompson, aka The King of Random, was a YouTuber who amassed well over 10 million subscribers during his run on the platform. His videos primarily focused on cool and sometimes wacky experiments, including how to make a laser-assisted blowgun, what does ice do in a metal foundry, and more. The channel is actually still active today, mainly being run by Grant's friends and family. Grant was formerly an airline pilot in Farmington, Utah, and always had an interest in learning about the inner workings of various items. He would mess around and take apart things at home with his friends, and later got the idea to record his project. Projects. This gave rise to his YouTube channel, which was originally created in 2010. By the late 2010s, Grant had decided that he wanted to drift apart from the channel a little bit, which can be seen with his co-host taking up the majority of his later videos. On July 29th, 2019, Grant made the move to go paragliding near Hurricane, which is a city located in Washington County, Utah. A camera was set up on Grant's motor. It's believed that he was going to document his journey in the air and share it with his viewers, but around 10 to 10.30 p.m., Grant's family called him to check in and see how the paragliding was. Grant never picked up. After another failed call, his family hoped that he was just busy, but when he failed to return home, his family reported him missing to the sheriff's office. Law enforcement was able to find Grant via GPS, which tracked down a device Grant was carrying. Unfortunately, when Grant was found, he had already died, and nearby was that camera that he had with him which recorded the entire incident. A video was uploaded on the King of Random YouTube channel titled Grant Thompson in Memoriam, Paying Respects to Grant. Then on August 1st, another video was created thanking Greg for all of the content that he has put onto his channel. It is mentioned that in the video of Grant's final moments, panic can be clearly seen in his face as he realizes that his equipment was malfunctioning. Grant frantically went to deploy his backup parachute, however that failed and Grant came crashing down, ultimately ending his life. And just like with most of these cases, law enforcement refuses to release the footage for obvious reasons. Christina Grimmie, aka Zelda X Love 64, was a singer slash YouTuber who appeared on shows including The Voice in season 6. Christina went on to sign with Island Records and produce several projects with them. Furthermore, Adam Levine and Lil Wayne both offered Christina spots on their respective label companies after she came in third on The Voice. Christina's family shared that they felt she had a gift for music around 6 years old after hearing her sing. Around 10 years old, Christina began to learn the piano, much of which she stated was learned by ear. In her mid-teens, Christina started to record herself singing and playing instruments and uploaded the videos onto YouTube. She shared that she wanted to bring people together and possibly inspire others to venture into their musical side. Her friends also played a key role in getting her to finally start 
uploading. Her first big video was her cover of Party in the USA by Miley Cyrus. This sparked a slew of new viewers, driving more and more attention to her musical abilities. She even went on to perform backup vocals for Selena Gomez and The Scene in 2011. From there, Christina went on to open for Selena Gomez, All Star Weekend, and The Jonas Brothers. And as I mentioned at the start, Christina had a good run on The Voice as well. However, on June 10th, 2016, Christina was in Orlando, Florida to perform with a band known as Before You Exit. Christina finished her performance around 9 to 10 p.m., so she proceeded to sign some autographs and take pictures with fans at the venue. And of course, there were many people who recorded their encounters with the singer. Around 10.30 p.m., a superfan named Kevin James Loibel walked up to Christina to meet her. Christina opened up her arms ready for a hug, but instead she received three shots. Kevin had pulled out a gun and opened fire on Christina point blank. Immediately, the scene turned into chaos as fans scrambled for safety and Christina's brother, who was nearby, dove and tackled Kevin to the ground. Christina's brother and Kevin wrestled each other for a brief moment before Kevin broke free. He backed up against the wall and then proceeded to take his own life. Medical officials were called, but there seemed to be little hope of saving Christina. She was in critical condition after being taken to the Orlando Regional Medical Center and later passed away at 11 p.m. Officials reported that Christina was struck once in the head and twice in her torso. Law enforcement reported that Kevin got to Orlando via a taxi from St. Petersburg, which is about a 100 to 130 mile trip depending on the route. Kevin brought along two firearms, a hunting knife, and an additional two magazines. Investigators believe that Kevin initially intended to return home after committing the murder, but panicked after he was tackled to the ground. Event attendees were not frisked, nor were there any metal detectors at the time. One person took note of how security seemed more concerned about people bringing in outside food in their bags over weapons. Others who noticed Kevin prior to his crime stated that he looked anxious during Christina's performance. It was later revealed that Kevin had a creepy obsession with Christina online. This obsession grew to the point where Kevin had hair transplants, teeth whitening, and eye surgery performed on himself with the sole purpose of impressing Christina. He even lost a significant amount of weight to improve his appearance. Kevin's one and only friend shared that they knew of Kevin's interest with the young woman, but they had no idea it was to this extent. The friend had no idea that this wasn't a simple interest or online crush. It was a crazed infatuation. There are numerous videos of Christina from the POV of people waiting in line that show her signing autographs. Some of these videos, which show the moment that Kevin walked up to Christina, have been confiscated. 